of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean, back to your program, Treasures. We are in the book of Acts, starting now, chapter 8. You all know chapter 7 was about Stephen and the great sermon he gave. And because of this sermon, he was stoned. And Saul was there witnessing and seeing what's happening. And he did not stone him by his hands, but he was, you know, kind of accepting what's happening. Now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem, because one of the figures of the church, Stephen, first deacon or the archdeacon, was stoned. The people against the church felt powerful, like they can start persecuting all Christians. So, movement of anti-church persecution started and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. You know, it's according to the plan of God. He permitted this to happen, that the people, the believers, were scattered away from Jerusalem. They were scattered in Judea and Samaria, but these people were carrying the light of God. They were carrying the good news. So as if spreading the fire of God everywhere, except the apostles. The apostles stayed in Jerusalem because they wanted to support the mother church and they were ready to be killed like their son Stephen. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made a great lamentation over him. So he was buried and the apostles shared in this prayer but they stayed in Jerusalem facing this persecution. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. So this strong man, young man called Saul, was very much anti-Christ, was very much anti-church. And since the murder of Stephen, he was very full of wrath against these people. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. So they did not stop preaching the word. They were like empowered with the murder of their beloved Stephen, and they felt like we are we all ready to die for the word of God. So they went here and there preaching the good news. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Speaking about Philip, this Philip is the second in row in, in the deacons. He's like the second man after Stephen. He's one of the seven deacons chosen in chapter 6. So Philip went to Samaria. He's not one of the apostles. But some people considered him like one of the 70. In all cases, he is the second one after Stephen. So Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. You may know that Christ himself started preaching the good news in Samaria after speaking with the Samaritan woman mentioned in the Gospel of St. John chapter 4. And after this long dialogue, all the Samaritan people went out to see him outside the city. And he stayed for like two days speaking to them. So the Samaria people knew about Christ. And everyone heard the story of Christ crucified. And everyone also heard about the Christian witnessing to Christ as the one who rose from the dead. So Philip went to Samaria, and the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So Philip also, like Stephen, he had the talents of making wonders and miracles. So speaking about Christ and showing many wonders and miracles, People listened carefully to Philip and many, many people followed him. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed. So Philip cast out many demons and people were amazed with this. And many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. So it's not like one or two miracles, maybe hundreds of miracles happened. And there was great joy in that city. So Philip speaking about the Christian doctrine, about Christ himself, the Savior, 
about, you know, the Holy Spirit. Many people could see the truth through the miracles also, not only by the words. But there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria because these people were like Gentiles and they loved to see these sorcerer people and they were astonished at their miracles or wonders, but these people usually working with devil. And the people of Samaria were astonished at him, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, that before Philip, saying, This man is the great power of God. He considered himself as the great power of God, and people, you know, believed him. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorcerers for a long time. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. So look at this, because, you know, devil can do miraculous things or some wonders or some signs, but he will never speak about the truth because he is the big liar. He spread lies everywhere. He wants always to take people his side to the darkness of eternity. But Philip, being the man of God, speaking about the good news, the truth, and also having the power of wonders and signs, people shifted from Simon's side to Philip's side because they believed not only in the miracles, but also in the good news, in the word themselves, in the truth. So all men and women believed in these words were ready to be baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. Simon could not, you know, stand against this high wave of or high movement. All people are following Philip, so Simon had to follow them. So he, he said that he the believer and he came to Philip like any catechumen wanting to be baptized. So himself also believed and when he was baptized he continued with Philip and was amazed but put in mind that his heart was not clean. He wanted to take the, you know, the privilege of being a Christian or a fellow man to Philip in order to have the old authority on the people again and to let people follow him again. So he was not, uh, you know, pure in his heart, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. He was amazed because he could see the real power of God. He knew that he was like making uh, tricks and cheating people, deceiving them. But now he could see the real truth and the real power of God. And when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. So Philip being like a deacon, at that time, it was accepted that the deacons, being one level of priesthood, they could baptize people, but they could not lay hands, they could not give them the oil of myron. So they need the apostles to do this sacrament. And we used to see Peter and John moving together, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So they are giving them the Holy Spirit through the laying down, which was the earliest, you know, way of giving them the Holy Spirit. Then it came the ointment or the oil of Myron. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So now we're speaking about the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of the Holy Spirit. And they, you know, we need both of them. So the people got the sacrament of the Holy Baptism by the hands of Philip, then they got the Holy Spirit 
through the laying down of the hands of Peter and John. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hand the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So look at this. You know, Simon had the, the old mind of sorcerers. He looked up to Philip as a great man. Now he could see a greater man like Peter and John. And these men are more powerful. They could give the Holy Spirit. So now his passion, you know, got higher. He wanted to be like a bishop or an apostle in the church because he wanted to be the leader, the top leader. So he offered them money. Because he cared not for the Holy Spirit, he cared not for the people to be baptized, he cared not for the Word of God, he cared only for himself, to make himself as before the great man of Samaria and the top leader and people should, you know, follow him. And he knew that Peter and John will move away from Samaria to other cities, so he will take this part and he will lead people. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. So Peter filled with the spirit, he could see that this heart is not correct and his goal is totally devilish and this man will hurt the church. So he stopped him in a tough way. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness. So, you know, speaking about a baptized man, a member in the church, we are now caring for his salvation. Peter cared that this man should repent because now he is very wicked. And pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Because I think St. Peter could see that this man is not going to repent. He is not ready for repentance. He is not caring to be a good man. No, he just wanted to be another Philip or another Peter. He thought of the ego thing. He wanted to be the star of the city as before. So, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. So Peter, seeing the heart of this man, he could see how much bitter in his heart. He is like poisoned with devilish thoughts and bound by iniquity. He is like bound by evil powers because he wanted to just by the mystery of God. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. But it was well known in history that this man, Simon, never repented. And he stayed like an enemy against the church. That's why the church considered anyone who wanted to pay money in order to be a priest, it's like a heresy. It's a big problem. It's a big sin. It's a big poison in the church. And this man may be exiled from the body of the church because the sacraments of God should never be bought by money. So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. So having this story of Simon will tell us that in all generations, there is always someone who is not pure in heart, who came to be a member in the church, but his goal is different. You know, we spoke about Judah from Iscariot, and then Hananiah and Sapphira, now Simon the sorcerer. These people were considered part of the church, but they were not into the church because they loved something away from God. They loved money or they loved their ego. They loved the authority, but they loved the world, but they did not love the word of God or the heaven of God. So they did not stop only in the city of Samaria, but also moved around to the villages of Samaria. 
because the Samaria part is like one third of all Palestine map at that time. So they spent some good time preaching the word of God to all the villages and most of the people were accepting the good news happily. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, back to Philip, the great man, the second deacon, the one who are making wonders and miracles, the very good disciple to the church because he asked for St. Peter and St. John to come and put their hands. So he is, you know, following the rules and rituals of the church, saying, Arise and go toward the south, along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. When you see the map, you can see Jerusalem in the northern part and moving down to Gaza as if coming to Egypt. On this road, there was an important man who was, is re very ready now to receive the word of God. This is desert. At that road, it was desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, uh, Enoch, of great authority under Canadax, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. So there was like a big minister, a big man, an important figure, like, uh, you know, he is in charge of all the treasury of the queen of Ethiopian people. He was from a Jew background, so he came to Jerusalem to worship God at the custom of all the Jewish people living away from Jerusalem. And in his way back to Ethiopia, he started moving back. So the Holy Spirit through the angel spoke to Philip, go and speak to this man, because this will open up the whole country of Ethiopia to Christ. Then the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip, as the pure man, was guided by the Spirit. Although he was very busy, you know, following up the service in Samaria, having thousands of people now being baptized and giving many sermons and starting serving all the people around in the villages. But because of the Holy Spirit, he was called to start another service in another country far away from Jerusalem. But because of the plan of God and the guidance of the Spirit, God is focusing on the whole world. May God bless you all. Amen.